Hello Internet, Mike Bordellini here, and I'm going to talk to you today in this writing video about writing scenarios for tabletop role-playing games. Now I have tried my, I'm working on writing a lot of scenarios, um, both for Call of Cthulhu, Traveler, and my own properties. Um, both the SCP role-playing game and Hawthorne. But before I go any further, I'm actually gonna do something I normally don't do in these videos and drop a spoiler warning. So there's content which may be relevant to the tabletop role-playing games that I'm gonna be discussing. discussing. So if you intend to play any of these games, should probably stop now. All right, so let me begin. I write a lot of these stories. I mean, they're scenarios. They're not long. I mean, they average about eight pages. But something that I have noticed while writing this, and the reason I'm making this video, is that the same protagonists appear so antagonists appear the same almost all the same time. Um, doesn't really happen with Traveler because it's not that kind of a system where you don't have these eldritch beings that control everything. So this doesn't apply so much to Ice Cory Prison or my upcoming game. Um, Organism X that is going to be for Traveler. Um, now, in for the story scenario, Forgotten is the first time that I used the protagonist, the King in Yellow. I didn't want to have to reuse not only the trope of some people reading the story of the King in Yellow, uh, but also didn't want to have to fall back on the same Eldritch being that I normally do. That being, of course, is Nyarlathotep. Because Nyarlathotep can be anything that you want him to be. I mean, he is, makes a prominent appearance in the scenarios unboxing Red Spell in the Sea, Dr. Clark's Cabin. And of course, Dr. Clark's Cabin being my first scenario that I released. Um, but I've tried to get away from those. So, Remains of the Deep, obviously, um, focuses on deep ones. Diablery and the Stars Aren't Right focus on the Migo. And North Island Sanitarium features an entirely new creature um, that doesn't really conform to any of the creatures that H.P. Lovecraft created. So I'm going to go through a little bit of the process of how I create these scenarios and the first thing I think about is the concept I want to go for. So, for example, I'm working on a couple more scenarios right now, and I have a couple that are have basic outlines in my head, which I'm going to start working on shortly. Um, the first concept is a Pulp Cthulhu scenario about... Nazis. I mean, who doesn't love Nazis as bad guys? Featured in Indiana Jones, and that those stories were always exciting, and you know the adventures were grand. And I think that Nazis are a perfect enemy in Pulp Cthulhu when you're not involving the mythos all that much. Um. So I mean, the concept is the Nazis discovered the um, elder things and became manipulated and transformed 
based on their technology, yada, yada, yada. The heroes have to go through and eliminate the Nazi threat. Um, but at the same time, the heroes are working for an organization that has less than good motives. Um, if you are familiar with the Pulp Cthulhu rulebook, you know that there are organiz organizations that are considered good organizations and organizations that are considered bad. And the heroes of, pulp of this scenario work for one of the bad organizations, specifically the Ambrosia Foundation. Um, so something else I'm working on is a story where the it's a regular Cthulhu, uh, regular Call of Cthulhu scenario, where the hero goes to a mysterious um, carnival and trying to rescue a missing person. Pretty simple, um, but they're going to encounter the mythos there. Um, I am trying to find a way to incorporate Cthulhu into this scenario because Cthulhu, despite, you know, being the granddaddy of this whole game of the whole mythos cycle that we utilize here in this game that never appears. I mean, he's sleep and he's sleeping. Um, that's my plan for that. Now the two I have in my head both center around Yogg-Sothoth as the main primary villain. Um, one is set in the future um, aboard a space station the computer has been infected by Yogg-Sothoth, yada, yada, yada. I'm not going to go into details because I don't have the details written. Um, and basically, the adventurers, the investigators, they have to escape. That's pretty much it. That's the basic idea. Um, the next uh, scenario idea I'm working with in my head is more of a framework scenario where it relies a lot on the keeper to write the scenario and I'm just providing some of the outline for it. And that's where the keeper has to look at the character sheets of the individual investigators and determine what from their backstory should appear in the scenario. Um, it's been done very rarely before there's something similar to that but i want to sort of make it grandiose and big i mean the heroes are going to be in a town um and confronted by their own history their own experiences their own backstories um sort of you want to associate it with something that you might be familiar it's Basically, Silent Hill, but in the Cthulhu mythos. And it's all being orchestrated by Yogg-Sothoth. But that's, again, just, it's in my mind, it's a working concept that I intend to write and hopefully have released early next year. So, going through the process... The first thing I start with, and you might have guessed this just by how I've been talking, is I start with a concept. All right. Whether it's something that I've already written, like I've already written, um, like say, I don't know, let me pick a story that I've written. Um, let me go with, well, my first, Dr. Clark's Cabin. Okay. It was going to be short. It was going to be quick. I wanted a scenario that you can just drop into any other scenario that involves Naralathotep. 
Um, it has some elements that associate with um, the mask on the left tap campaign, but at the same time, doesn't have to specifically connect to that campaign. It's going to uh, connect to any campaign that the keeper is running, provided it's associated with the mythos and for ease of use associated with Nyarlathotep. Um, so I knew that was going to be a story about Nyarlathotep, but Nyarlathotep was not going to necessarily appear in the story. He was going to be mentioned. He was going to be referenced. The monster is one of the um, children of the Sphinx, one of the humanoid animal hybrids that appears in the Mask of Nyarlathotep in the um, Egypt section of that campaign. And then I'm just trying to figure a way to bring that scenario to a fictional city in Massachusetts. Um, another thing that I'm going to quickly touch on is that I don't always um, reference Arkham, Miskatonic, Innsmouth, Dunwich, any of those towns. Um, because I, my concept, my overall idea, overarching idea, is to set a lot of these scenarios, at least in part, in another fictional town that applies to all of my scenarios, but makes it easy for keepers to put anywhere. Um, there's a big push in the Call of Cthulhu games, if you're familiar with it, where scenarios are not set in Arkham or anywhere in the area for that specific reason. You know, sometimes keepers want to play a scenario in, you know, Kansas or somewhere in England or, you know, maybe make a globe trotting scenario campaign where, like, if you want to go back to Massanothotep, starts in Peru, goes there's a little bit in America, but then England, Egypt, Australia, China, you know, it doesn't really focus on the area, on this country. Um, this country being America, if you're listening and you're not in, in America at this time. So you start out with the concept and you work from there. It can be just a general concept, like, oh, you're going to pick out what Eldritch being is going to appear and then fill in details from that point. You might change details as you go along. Um, the concept that I have outlined in my head involving Yonix know, Thoth and the outline of how a keeper should run in this scenario started off as taking place in a confined location like a mall or something like that. But I decided um, relatively recently that a mall wasn't the best setting for this. Um, and I expanded it to being in a town, which is going to suit the purposes of my outline better than I, th I feel a mall would. Um, so, concept, starting with that. Second, details. You know, you want to put it in a cabin. You want to put it in a town etc, etc. Step three, um, and this is important for Call of Cthulhu, is when. Um, I'm not much of a Gaslight era player or a writer, so I don't, I try not to write in the past all that much, or at least pre-1920s. Um, now, obviously, 1920s is the prime area for Call of Cthulhu. That's when everything 
So that's when the stories were written. Um, but in this day and age, I try to also write modern scenarios that utilize modern technologies, modern modern sensibilities, modern way of living. Um, so, and then I of course have some future ideas where, you know, if I go back to the stars aren't right scenario, it takes place aboard a starship, um, small ship, but a research ship nonetheless. Um, the other future scenario that I'm planning, I'm outlining in my head, takes place on a space station. It's a future scenario. Um, now, could it have been set on Earth in modern times or even in the past a little bit? Yes. That's not a, up for debate. Definitely could have been. Um, but I think it works better if it's not. And... I want to also, at the same time, expand my reach so that I'm presenting more content to these diverse areas. I'll let other writers handle Gaslight Era. You know, that's a lot of what um, companies like Golden Goblin Press have done. They've focused a lot on not only modern but also Gaslight Era. So I'm going to leave it up to them. Uh, yeah, it's just... When I set out to write a tabletop RPG, I write it... I write a scenario that I want to play. Or I put into writing a scenario that I've played for Call of Cthulhu with other people with minor edits to sort of just streamline it and make it consistent. Um, and then, of course, you try to play test it at least a little bit so you get an idea of what players may or may not do and if there's something that you need to, uh, if you're the direction you want to steer them in, introduce more clues for them to find so that they understand that that route is a possibility. I'm not really going to say more because there's not much more to say. You know, just work through the concept of details and the timing of it, and that's just more details and details. The concept of details are the biggest things you have to worry about. Um, I do encourage other writers to write scenarios for games. Um, there's several publishers who have community projects that allow fans of the system to write content and sell it. Um, most of my work like went for publishing through whether it be Chaosium or Mongoose Publishing are these community program titles. Um, like for Chaosium, it's Miskatonic Repository. Um, for Mongoose, it's the Traveler's Aid Society. You know, it's there. It's something that can be taken advantage of. And I fully recommend it. You know, you can write something nice, short, and sell it make it available either for a couple dollars or if you want make it free or pay what you want that's entirely up to you i'm not going to go into the whole business aspect of it but help expose you get more exposure for not only for yourself but for your writing and what you want to do um and you never know maybe the more you produce some of these publishers might get on board and be like, you know, we want you to write a full on scenario for us. We want something expansive and something that's going to be uh, 
produced by them, you know, either a book or something like that. And then you get your name out there more and you get to be part of that community. Um, but you never know. So I'm going to end the video here. Um, thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe, hit that like button. Um, leave a comment below the video. If you go to my support pages, um, you can go to coffee and you can actually buy a NPC in an upcoming story. And like I said, you know, I write scenarios all the time. So there's not going to be any ever shortage of NPCs that can possibly appear. Um, and you can buy this for just a couple dollars. Um, go to coffee, go to the store page there. Um, you know, support me on Patreon. If you want to appear in a bigger story, um, I do write normal novellas and short stories and novels. You can be in one of those too. Um, just gotta pledge a certain amount and yeah, you can be in one of those. Heck, if you pledge enough to Patreon, you can be the hero of a story. And if you want to just check out more of my drive through RPG content or maybe buy something else from another system that you really want to play or that you do play, follow my drive through RPG link. Um, it's not going to cost you any more to buy Go Through Me first, but I get a little very small um, reference payment for just sending you their way. And so that does help me out a little bit as well. Every little bit does help. So that being said, thanks for watching and have a great day.